continuation of uh, the research methods in chapter 3. So at times you have that chapter 3 based on the fact that we have uh, various research areas, various disciplines, engineering, humanities, various areas of sciences. So, so these are some of the captions of what and what you may be having depending on the research areas. The, for engineering design approach, the materials and tools that are used, the process details, the data analysis, for sciences, experimental setup, you know, the data collection method, and the, the tools and theoretical framework, then the statistical analysis that was used for the presentation of data after research findings must have been done. Then the humanities also follows. So these are just the caption of that then up to chapter four. The chapter four is the part where you present the findings of your research without interpretation, particularly if you are splitting the results and discussion like I earlier explained. So in this case, we're looking at splitting it. So you present the results without discussion, without explanation, without analysis of the result. So here you have key components to be for data visualization. You have your charts, you have your graphs, you have your tables. These are tools that we normally use you know, to present uh, results. Then uh, you have to also can present summary of key findings. Then chapter five, in chapter five is where you carry out discussion that is explanation of the results presented in chapter four. So it's inter you interpret the results and discuss their implications to research, implications to knowledge, and uh, you know trying to make particular reference and comparing it to previous researchers who had you know earlier worked or presented their findings in that very area. The key components are various ways to you know compare your results with the existing uh, existing literature. This is very germane. You have to present your work, compare it with how close. Its relativity with other researchers who had actually researched earlier in that field, the implications for theory, practice, and policy, then the limitations and suggestions for you know future research. And uh, these limitations and suggestions for future research would also be the gap in knowledge for another researcher to come and actually research upon. So, like I said earlier, for every research, there's always a research gap. No matter how detailed, how researchers that have earlier you know worked in an area there will always be research gap. And uh, like I said, in your literature review, your chapter two, you have to present the work of various researchers who had actually researched in this area, in that area that you are carrying out your project. You know, start referencing them up to the gap where you want to actually fill. Then the last chapter being chapter six will be conclusions and recommendations. And you have to conclude on your findings with a clear statement. Then the recommendation can also form some of the challenges, some of the things that you that would have happened, that you probably that you would have done better, or the challenges that you have faced. And all these two can also form research gap or sources of research for other researchers.